Hey, nerdlings. What up? So, uh, real quick question. Do you nerd for love? Uh... Like, Valentine's Day. You know, something that we do for Valentine's Day is we do not do traditional stuff. We are always giving each other nerdy gifts. And uh, you probably already saw. Bada bing! All right. Tis the PlayStation Classic. Yes. And you know what? Um, we had put some videos up. We had got all of the Nintendo classics, the NES, Famicom, Super Famicom, Super Nintendo. Uh, I think there's a special edition one we're going to have to get. Yeah. But in the meantime, go we had to go ahead and get the PlayStation Classic. And Yeah, it's cute. It's tiny. I like tiny things. <laughs> uh, you know, the interesting thing is um, the PlayStation 1, there's not a whole lot of uh, nostalgia in it for me personally. Uh, you know, mostly I played a lot of like RPGs. Um, I was really big in RPGs on the Super Nintendo, and when Squaresoft went to Sony, I followed. The only reason I even had a PlayStation 1 was because I wanted to play the Harry Potter games. Oh. So. Good call. And the first few were more like the book than the they movie. They were. They right? were more so like. So that was kind of a they weird. They were more cartoony, and they were they followed the book a little bit more, and they also they also had their own like they put their own stuff into it. But then as the movies slash games progressed, they started becoming more realistic and more just flat out movie. Had to really follow the movie. Yeah. <coughs> I like the first ones better. Well, let's at least take a look inside the box and see how this looks. Oh no, the collectability! Box in a box! So we have the PlayStation Classic Manual. Do not expose to sunlight. Do not get wet. Do That's, not pass go. It's a Mogwai and Monopoly. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is precious. Look at the little guy. Wow. Look at it. That is definitely a tiny system. And we haven't even got it all the way out yet. I should let you do it. It's your gift. <laughs> oh, oh my oh gosh. Oh my gosh. That is Look pretty at great. That. I will say, you know, I know everybody was giving the PlayStation one especially a hard time, but I love these little classics because they go to such detail on these things. Oh my gosh, look at that. I mean, it really does look like this door could open, honestly. You know, you've got all the, the proper ports and vents and everything. You've got open, which doesn't really open. You can at least push the open button. Now, I believe that pressing the open button takes you back to the menu to change games. Now, there is a reset button and a power button. So, yeah, as she said, I just wanted to point out that it does have the uh, port in the back that initially would have been used uh, for different expansions. I know the Game Shark would plug into that. And it actually does have the, um, it's a solid whole block, but it does have the port for the memory cards and everything. So that is so, oh my gosh, that's so cute. Look how tiny. That is just adorable. I love it. And something nice was that it came with... Two controllers. Two controllers. You know, it doesn't feel any different than it. I think they're their normal size controllers. So, obviously, they learned from the uh, failing of the NES Classic, <laughs> which only came with the one controller, uh, because all the systems since then have come with or the two. Or how tiny that one was. <laughs> and let's see. Cord. Well, I don't know. Do you think that's about the same length? Honestly, that feels like it is. The only issue, of course, is the fact that to change games, you do have to hit that button on the console itself. Boop. It's all plugged in and ready to go. Now, I won't lie. I had hoped that they would do the DualShock controller. Mm -hmm. I absolutely understand why they did the original controller, but uh, 
especially when I came into playing a lot more games on the PS1, and then of course following Sony down the line, I became very accustomed to that DualShock design. Uh, otherwise, I mean, it does feel very good. Something that was very nice about the Sony controller is that, you know, having man hands and not being a child, it was a <laughs> controller much better suited it was a very to, comfortable to hold on controller. to very good ergonomic design the two triggers feel really good uh being able to hold on to the controller underneath now the super nintendo really upped the ante from the original nintendo controller by getting rid of those you know corners, corners. rounding out the <laughs> controller but the playstation controller really brought it to perfection by yeah. you know giving they you really grips did. You can really get serious about your gaming. And they've only kind of gone up from there, like, of how well they've done it and everything. The other nice thing is, is it plugs in via USB. Nice. Port. So not kind of the uh, the weird little proprietary port that the uh, Nintendo one yes. was using. Yes. Now, didn't you say something about you had read or heard that you can sort of hack this one but not hack it? Without yes. messing with the I've actual been seeing programming. YouTube videos, and it looks like you can actually add more games to a flash drive and plug it into that Since USB port. Since it does have port, the USB ports on both. Which is very nice because um, even though it's often simple to hack these, these classic systems, I personally like mm -hmm. to keep them yeah. as they were out of the box. I don't like to mess with it. Uh, partially because I'm the one that would figure out a way to mess it all up. But also because, uh, you know, a lot of these systems, we have most of the games already. Yeah. And any other games that we want to play, I mean, you know, we mm -hmm. have the proper systems to do so. But, um, you know, there's also something fun about keeping them in their original state yeah. because it's kind of like that historical element. You know, those games were put on there kind of for a reason, you know, to you know represent yeah. the system. Well, and I know a lot of people were giving the PlayStation Classic a hard time because there's only 20 games on there which is even less than what Nintendo did, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, there's so many games out there and I feel like they could have fit a lot more than almost even Nintendo did on here. I, I really like. think that they could have. And let's be fair, um, of course, we've all heard the talks, we've all seen the videos and everything, uh, all the debates about the, the games that were loaded on here. And there were some things that kind of surprised me, uh, things like, Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey. I think that was actually a great game to put on this because it was a very different kind of game. I like you know, that game. Very different kind of uh, platforming puzzle game, but you know, not a lot of people really knew of it. Uh, I like the way Abe sounded. <laughs> <laughs> he was cute. Um, even though I personally don't think it's held up very well, the original Grand Theft Auto. I think that was a pretty good addition to it because uh, GTA games are very synonymous with games now. Yeah. And seeing kind of where the series came from, it's like, wow, that's that's impressive. We have come a long way. And there's Metal Gear. Yeah, Metal Gear was <laughs> definitely one that had to be on here. Um, I'm very glad to see Final Fantasy VII. I was surprised by Wild Arms, and that's not to knock it because I enjoy Wild Arms. I really like it. Uh, the PS1 definitely, definitely had some great RPGs. So, I mean, all the RPGs on here, that's fine by me. What game on here do you think should not have been on here that they did include? That you just thought was ridiculous? <laughs> um, you know, like I'm looking at this, you have Intelligent Cube, Mr. Driller, and Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. I feel like they were uh, really pushing the puzzle games a little too much. Uh, That's you, what cell phones are for. You probably could have got rid of one of those. Mr. Driller, I know it's not right up there with Super Puzzle Fighter 2, but uh, I feel like they're just similar enough that you probably could have dropped that one yeah. in favor of putting another game on. And on that note, um, honestly, the three main games that I really would have loved to have seen on here would have been a Tomb Raider game, yeah, a Crash game, and a Spyro game. Those I, do seem kind of synonymous with PlayStation, yes. and it's very odd. Do you think they didn't do that because the Spyro just released a collection I, thing? I feel like that's why Crash and Spyro didn't make it on here, uh, more because of the remasters and the re-releases. But they're so synonymous, they, they would have been a great game to put on here. 
And the same with Tomb Raider, because for a while, Laura Croft was kind of like the unofficial mascot of PlayStation, amongst others. Call me. Excuse me. My heart is hey, hey, you, you, you are so totally whipped. I'm Brad. Let's ride a bicycle bill for two. <laughs> then we can go to the potpourri store and then go buy sheets. Would you rather be at home shooting a bazooka or watching a chick flick? Mm -hmm. Chick flick, bazooka. Chick flick, bazooka. Let me in, Brad. Who's that? Let me in. <laughs> Brad. I don't know. Brad? Maybe they were just embarrassed of the triangle boobs. <laughs> Maybe. They were like, no, we don't want to remind people about that. But. On the other hand, uh, there are some really great games here, like the Resident Evil Director's Cut, you know, uh, of course, that's a great one. As far as racing games go, having uh, Ridge Racer 4 is a really good choice. Although, Metal Gear, when I came about to play Metal Gear Solid, I was using the DualShock controller, so that will be something very interesting for me to try to do, is to use the regular controller. It does have Siphon Filter on there, and I remember watching friends from high school playing Siphon Filter like crazy. I loved... <laughs> when people would electrocute someone to death with a taser. <laughs> oh! <laughs> now, I will say that, uh, you know, when it comes to systems like this, whatever system it is, whether it's the PS1, NES, Super Nintendo, all of them, the more you start thinking about what games they could have put on there, the more you start to realize how many great games yeah, there were really on the systems. And that's where it becomes tough because it's like, where do you start to draw that line? And, you know, you definitely want to try to get as much of a variety as possible because, again, I came to PlayStation for the RPGs. I came so for Harry Potter. <laughs> if you had let me choose, it would have been 20 RPGs. I would have put all the Harry Potter <laughs> So, you know, whatever. Well, like I said in the valentine video that we had i wanted to you know keep the classic tradition going you know because we did a, i gave you a classic for christmas i gave you a classic for valentine's day last year so it's like this year there you go so um all y'all video gaming people out there i need another classic for christmas this year <laughs> <laughs> well uh i think that we are going to go relive some ps1 memories and I'm very curious to check out some of these games because I've always been very adamant that the PS1 has not held up as well as our memories yeah. make it out to be. It's very, very blobby. And like... So it's, and it's not all about the graphics, Yeah. but Sometimes some of the, about the graphics. <laughs> well, I was going to say some of those controls are more what haven't held up. Uh, you know, there's a reason why we've pretty much gotten rid of a lot of tank controls, especially for 3D games. I mean, could you imagine playing you know, Rise of the Tomb Raider and Shadow of the Tomb Raider with Laura Croft on an invisible grid. No, yeah. no thanks. No. But, uh, all right, well, we'll have to see uh, how many two-player games there are on here since we have two controllers. Yeah. That means we are going to need you guys to leave the video a couple of comments down below what you thought. Did you actually go out and pick one up now that the price has come down? Uh, maybe you had someone very special be kind enough to get one for you to uh, feed your gaming habit and let us know what you think of any of the games maybe there were some classics that you mm -hmm. revisited and they held up better than you expected or maybe not so much and be sure to give the video a like feel free to share it uh, subscribe hit that notification bell we are always putting new videos up and you never know what kind of video is coming out next and don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram so that we can let you know what's going on in the real world. We can let you know that YouTube has dropped a video because YouTube sometimes doesn't let you know that a video has dropped. And you can check out um, some pictures of stuff, you know, closer upper stuff, farther away or stuff, just stuff. <laughs> and don't forget to go to Tee Public, get, get some merches. We want to see those those pictures of your merches, guys. That right. sounds weird. Merches. Merches. Merches, guys. <laughs> All right, nerdlings, we'll see you next time. See you, nerdlings.
Hey nerdlings, I'm Tom, this is Lacey, this is Do You Nerd, let's go! That was, that was more just Partially because I'm, I'm the person that would figure out a way to mess it up. You alright kids? <coughs> Do we need to separate you two? Dog fight, cat fight. Anyway.